It's that time again. Let's see what's in the vintage toy box. And today on Vintage Toy Box, we're doing another Toys Then and Now video. And specifically, another Dinosaur Toys Then and Now. But today, we're doing a very special dinosaur, and that one is... The, the Diplodocus. Yep, the Diplodocus. And we're going to be talking about a very special Diplodocus, well, at least special to the people of the UK, and that's Dippy, which, for those of you who know, is the Diplodocus skeleton that stands in the main hall, or stood in the main hall, of the Natural History Museum. He's on tour now, so there's a blue whale there? Yes, yes, right. blue whale, yeah. And of course, you can't do a dinosaur video without our resident dinosaur expert, my lovely <laughs> hubby Stephen. Say hi. Hi, I'm just a dinosaur myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so let's have a look at these. Um, I'm going to start with the old one, which is this here. Um, and as you can probably see, it's a very long one because the tail just disappears um, off the camera. But this, of course, as we said before, is a Diplodocus. Um, some people pronounce it Diplodocus. Um, I personally say Diplodocus. Um, now, this is actually uh, from the 80s, um, and this, uh, I had these toys in the, uh, this dinosaur in the 80s at any rate, and uh, so it's quite nice to have a look at it now. But the big thing is, is this uh, Diplodocus is a basic model of the one that was on display in the Natural History Museum. Obviously, they put flesh and bone on, but the pose, as you can see, was how it used to be. Um, it was still like that when we came in 2006. Yes, yes. Um, now, uh, recently, they they have it with the tail raised off the ground, which is how we believe these uh, type of dinosaurs used to be. Um, <clears throat> you'll also notice on here that it's got very elephantine looking skin and stuff like that, um, where of course nowadays we know that that's uh, not correct. And you will see this represented in the uh, other model from now. Um, but firstly, just a little bit of history about um, the Diplodocus and also the uh, the one that was actually in the Natural, Muse Natural History Museum that actually got the nickname of uh, Dippy. So, um, these dinosaurs, they did believe, were about 27 to 30 metres long and, you know, quite, quite, um, uh, quite heavy, 10 to 20 tonnes. Um, although you'd actually expect it to be much heavier, um, but it's, still it's a got big boy. yeah, it's got hollow bones, which makes it much lighter. Um, now, Diplo Diplodocus actually means double beamed, and uh, that is because of the way their vertebrae are. It looks like they've got uh, a sort of um, shaped vertebrae to uh, that actually forms like a double beam type thing, um, and so it. Uh, the double beam of bone, as it were, the the, uh, uh, the vertebrae sort of split apart and they had the blood vessels in between the double beam to protect them uh, and things like that, or presumably because if it's got a long neck or a long uh, tail, if it moves it's got to be able to not break its blood vessels. Um, but anyway, now this was actually um, the original Diplodocus um, that was uh, found by a gentleman called Ornithil Charles Marsh in, I think, about 1877 uh, in the USA. Um, and uh, he described it and gave it its name. It's also about 150 million years old. Um, that's when it was alive. Um, so, yeah. Now, the particular dippy in, uh, in the Natural History Museum used to always be in the Great Hall, in the main hall. And it used to be in the position that this one is. Um, and uh, it is a direct cast of the Diplodocus that was found by Ornithil Charles Marsh, um, which um, the museum uh, acquired only a few years after he found it. And ever since then, it's been in the Great Hall. Um, recently, they changed the pose to have the tail off the ground like that, because they believed that rather than going down, it would go straight. And this here is where we bring in the new one to show the difference. Oh, well, let's put him over here because he's very long. So if you see this here, it's got a much more dramatic 
pose and they do believe that the tail was quite flexible um, and also they believe it uh, to had some sort of spine running down their back um, and it, as you can see with this one we've got scaly skin um, which is uh, well, that might be my dog in the background uh, uh, that is due to a fossil skin impression so we know quite a bit about it now it also this particular toy can actually stand like that you probably don't see the head now but unfortunately um, it's a bit too high uh, long but this is something else they reckon the di uh, the, the plodicus could do is rear up on their back legs um either to reach foliage high in the trees or even as a matter of defense against a predator because when you've got a 20 30 ton animal standing like that and a predator in front of you boom he kills it uh, <laughs> and they also have very elephantine feet five toed feet but there are small claws on one of the toes in the front, which could also be used, I suppose, for defense. Now, uh, I, we don't believe that it spends most of its time up, uh, rearing up like that. What it probably do, did to save energy and why it needed such a long neck is because it would stand in one position and then move around like graze just in that position using its neck, uh, a bit like a... Uh, a strimmer, a weed cutter, actually, um, and its teeth were perfectly suited to stripping plants of their leaves and things. Now, you'll also notice that on both models, the head is very small. It looks really almost ridiculous, particularly on the new one, but that's actually correct. The head was less than a metre long for this huge animal, but uh, very well suited to doing what it did. Um, now, the nice thing that I like now about the new model or the new type is the way that they have now positioned it, the musculature on the legs and the fact that it can whip its tail around and do things like that. And as you can also see from the head, um, they, uh, they've got the head a lot smaller and better in my point of view. And they've also put a nice little bit of colour on because these dinosaurs probably you know, still needed to uh, attract mates and things like that. So, um, whilst the original toy was pretty good at the time in the 80s, it, it actually, uh, that you know, is uh, very accurate for the time, we now know that this is now very inaccurate, if that's the right word. Um, and you it can is. still buy dinosaurs from the Natural History Museum, which is where I got originally got this one from uh, uh you could sort of buy a diplodocus but it's a very different model indeed it's much more like this one this one was actually um i bought from collectica um which is where most of my dinosaurs have been coming from recently because they do very good accurate uh models and uh, i think this one really looks pretty cool <laughs> it is for anyone who wants any dinosaur models collectica is a very good place to get them yeah. I'll try and put a link to them in the description down below for anyone who wants to go. And yeah, I, 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 the, the distributor that I get these from is, is called Everything Dinosaur. Um, and uh, their website's www.everythingdinosaur, I think. Um, okay, and we'll put that in the link down below. They're very you good. Take a look um, because like. they also give you, just as a matter of interest, when you buy a dinosaur, some information on the dinosaur, which is where I'm getting a lot of my information from. So, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's wrap this up a little bit. Um, so, the the other thing too is Dippy has gone on tour, all um, all over the country, and I believe it's going on tour around the world as well. So yes, they've taken is. the skeleton out of the Natural History Museum. There must be a phenomenal task dismantling all of these uh, bones and things. How they can um, put it back together again properly? Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> they. Uh, um, as we said before, they're not the actual bones, they're caster bones. I think the Natural Museum might even have the original somewhere, but I, I, I don't know about that. But the, very rarely do you see the actual bones on display because, well, they're heavy and brittle. But anyway, um, so this, this guy's gone on tour and so it's sadly missed from the museum. Some people are not happy about it because they've replaced it with a skeleton of a blue whale. Um, which, in my view, is not too bad. I mean, a blue whale is a pretty impressive creature when you look at it. 
Um, but I, I would have preferred to see some other dinosaurs in its place or something. Yes, I agree you know. with that. Me too. <laughs> you know, maybe a, a Triceratops and a Tyrannosaurus having a, having a go at each other or something like that. Anyway, so the last little fact before I finish is that this tail was so thin, they, and they believe these dinosaurs could crack it like a bullwhip. And so it would make this sort of thunderous sound when they shook it. Because it can, it used to, it could possibly go almost the speed of sound, like a bullwhip does. So that could be one way of keeping in contact, or even a way to scare off predators, because it would be a hell of a noise, and I'm sure no predator wants to be hit by this thing. I think their size would scare off predators. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's uh, the thing. And they keep growing all their life. So they do believe that these could have got even bigger, maybe up to 35, 40 metres. So yeah, um, they're, they're, they can be pretty impressive dinosaurs. And it's also one of the first dinosaur toys I had. So it's probably, it's very uh, nostalgic for me, especially now that you can see the difference. But yeah, I think we've covered most of it. Um, so uh, yeah, there you are. Also, Dippy the Diplodocus. Also a funny little story. The Diplodocus was also the dinosaur that at four year old, Hubby, told off a uh, tour guide in the museum for saying the name wrong. Yeah, he said Diplodocus, but I'd always known it. Um, I think I may have been about five, actually, but um, I always knew it as Diplodocus. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I would love to have been there to see that. but Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there you are. And that's our video. I really hope you enjoyed looking at these lovely dinosaurs as much as we enjoyed showing them. And if there are any other dinosaurs you guys would like to see, leave a comment down below and I'm pretty sure Hubby's got those dinosaur toys. Yeah, we definitely could probably find it, yeah. yeah. The other thing, if you would like to see, is Hubby's got a whole collection behind us which you can't see the way the camera's angled, but if you'd like, we can show you a whole dinosaur set up on the shelf behind us and Hubby yeah. can do you a dinosaur shelf tour if you'd like. Yeah, Let yeah. us know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, from me and from lovely Hubby, thank yeah, you for being here. Yeah, pleasure. I enjoyed myself, yeah. And uh, there's uh, these lovely dinosaurs to have a look at and a bit of nostalgia there. So, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, and we and definitely we enjoyed doing this video. I do love, I don't know much about dinosaurs, but it's lovely to listen to him talk about them. I've learned a lot more from him than I've actually learned, you know, from school and that when it came to them discussing dinosaurs, mm -hmm. which they did, not in length, but they did at my yeah, school. Yeah. <laughs> so, from us until our next video, have a lovely day, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a rate, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out. And thank you all for your wonderful and continued support of my channel.